morning. Sorry, I had to switch places, but I'm not tall enough to be seen over there. So I would love to welcome everyone, each, of, each one of you, for being here and wor worshiping with us today, whichever side of the camera you're on, meaning those of you here and those of you at home who are watching us. We really appreciate everyone being together. And we welcome you to worship with us today on Sharing Our Partnership Sunday. Kind of an intriguing title. Um, for first time guests, we're really glad you're here this morning and we have a gift for you. So please fill out the yellow welcome card and drop it in the offering plate or give it to an usher. We look forward to getting to know you. And if anybody's here, if you raise your hand, we'll give you a little gift. Any first timers? Okay. Today at 2 p.m., it's game on at Congregational Church of Soquel's first Youth Gaming Day in Parish Hall. All fifth graders and older are invited and bring your friends too. Now these are different kind of games than I used to play when I went to church fellowship. Xbox, Switch, I don't even know what that is, and more will be here for games and tournaments also snacks and devotions. Don't miss this. Our church is looking for volunteers. We have been asked to volunteer for another year at the Capitola Art and Festival, scheduled for September 9th and 10th. We are hoping to fill a 1.15 p.m. to 5 p.m. ticket booth shift on Sunday the 10th. This will be a fun time and a great way for our church to participate in this important community event that benefits schools in the Santa Cruz area. The church has been a proud longtime member of the Capitola Soquel Chamber of Commerce. If you would like to volunteer, please contact Scott or Laura Hamby. Next Sunday, September 3rd, is for sure to be a splash. It's the all church swim party and barbecue at the home of Ben and Sharon Walker. Bring your own drinks and an appetizer or dessert to share. Don't forget your towel and swimsuit because if it's like today, it's gonna to feel really good up there. Please RSVP to Cindy Borum so we have an approximate number of people attending. Coming up the following Sunday, which is September 10th, it's a grand jam. It's time for you and a time to invite those who are grandest to you so they can mark this event on their calendar and be celebrated. We all have grands in our lives, not just grandparents, but grand friends, grand siblings, grand neighbors, um, somebody who's important to you that's made an impact in your life. So we would love to have them come and celebrate with us. There's gonna be live music in the courtyard and a taco bar. So it is not to be missed. Please come and join us as we celebrate all people. There is still time to donate to Mission of the Month, which is the Pan American Institute. If you would like to donate, please do so by leaving your donation in the church offering plate, online or in the church office. Thank you. And now I have a bonus announcement. We all know that we have a long tradition here, um, 10 years plus of helping those with food anxiety because we donate to Second Harvest Food Bank. And one of the big ways we donate to Second Harvest Food Bank is our taste of Soquel, which had to be postponed because of COVID, of course. We did things a little different for a couple years, but now we're back and we wanna really celebrate. All proceeds go to Second Harvest. Even those of us who work have to buy a ticket to come here to work. So everything we raise goes to Second Harvest, which is a great, great um, community service. And so you can sport the new look. Sorry, Bill. Ta -da -da -da. You too can have one of these. It actually matches my dress, just so you know. Um, so please, support Taste of SoCal, put it on your calendar, 
be prepared to come. You get food from a local restaurants. You get wine and beer from local breweries and live music. It's a fantastic event and we welcome all of you. And be sure and check your bulletins for more information and specific details. And once again, welcome. We're delighted you're here with us. Join with me in our responsive call to worship this morning. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. And we too can rejoice as we stand to sing our opening hymn, number 532, Be Thou My Vision.
Let us pray. Open my eyes that I may see the needs of others. Open my ears that I may hear their cries. Open my heart so they may need not be without succor. Show me where love and hope and faith are needed and use me to bring them to those places. And so open my eyes and ears that I may this coming day be able to do some work of peace for thee. Amen. Good morning. Our responsive reading today is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. It can be found in your bulletin. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. May God add his blessing to the reading of the word.
Thank you. Wonderful music. And now we have a time of sharing our prayers. And as you can tell today, Mark is not here. He's on vacation this week. And um, we are here, four of us up here, Bob and Cindy and Laura and I, to share some of our experiences that we've had this summer with our partnerships, which you'll hear about. But we also want to do something a little different, or sometimes we've done in prayers. I'd like to invite you to tell me what you would like us to be praying for. And I'm going to repeat them and then include them in our morning prayers. So I would invite you to just speak up and tell me who you'd like us to pray for or what situation you'd like us to pray for. Don't be shy. Yes, Joyce. Michael Smith battling cancer. Thank you. Yes. My sister Judy Guerrero has cancer. Now, she has she gone to Hawaii yet for the wedding? So, she, and she's doing okay. Good. All right. We've been praying for that a long time because she really wanted to be well enough to travel for her granddaughter's wedding. Uh, anybody else? Bob. Okay, Gary and Stephen are both battling cancer as well. And Carolyn has some memory issues. Somebody else? Yes, Johnny. Uh, people who have lost their homes in Maui County. Yes, Maui and all the loss there. Thank you. Sue. Uh oh. Yeah. A disease unknown. That's un. Yeah, that's hard. Yes. Um, Rhonda and then Jeannie. Yes. Yeah, Jeannie. All the extremes. Anyone else? Kevin? Yes. Uh, Ross. Yeah. Ross, thank you. Yes, he's been in our prayers. Anyone else? Think of someone or something? Yes. Sister in law, Lori Miller, battling cancer. Oh, I don't like that word anymore. There's so many. Yes, Dave. And what's his first name? Okay, just a friend. Okay, yes. For my friend Kevin Smith, who is dying of multiple cancers. Yes, Rhonda. Dorothy Hale and Earl for care of their family. Dorothy Hale and Earl, of course. It's good to hear the words out loud and to listen to each other. Anyone else have a thought? Yes. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? Well, yes. As you can tell, we'd, prayer is really important, and all of these people are really important. So... Let's take a, a moment of silence, and then I'll finish our prayers. Oh, Lord, you've heard from all of us that we lift up our prayers to you. We lift up all of our families and friends and members of our church and a community and those around the world. There is so much need. We pray for all of those 
that are fighting cancer, for Mike and Judy and Gary and Stephen and Lori and all of the other ones that are fighting diseases, whether it's Susan's nephew and we don't know what it is, the brains of Kevin and um, Dave's friend, Stan in recovery, so much needs for healing and hope for Dorothy Hale, for Tom and Carol, all of our friends, Lord, we pray for them. But we pray especially in our world for those in Maui, those that have lost everything, those who are still searching for loved ones. What a horrible place and what a horrible time for them. Lord, just wrap your arms around them and let them know that they are not alone, that there are people around the world that are praying for them, praying for their peace and comfort and care. Be with them. Be with all of us around the world. We look at the news and we see the fires and we see the droughts and we see the flooding and we see so much destruction. And then there's the war, war in Ukraine and war in other countries in Africa. People not caring about people, Lord, bring your love somehow to the people. Let them know that no matter the outside world is crazy, that there's a place in their heart that they can know you and know love. Be with each and every one that we spoke of, be with Ross and be with anyone else that I've forgotten. <laughs> but Lord, you know what our prayers are. You know when we come to you that you hear us. And when we come together, there's power in prayer. Lift us all as we lift these wonderful folks up. Be in our earth. Heal our earth and heal the tragedies and the needs that are all around it. For we pray all these things in your precious name and come together in the prayer that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we continue our worship, we continue by being able to share a little of what God has given to us. So I'll invite our ushers to come forward to take our morning offering.
Now let us stand for our doxology. we ask that you take these gifts and multiply them and let them be used for your glory and for peace throughout the world. Amen. Sharing a pulpit. Well, um, it's my turn to say welcome, and you know, I keep an eye on who's watching at home. I don't know who. Nobody ever says hi. If you're at home, say hi sometimes. Um, but but there are seven of you out there. So seven seven monitors. So to all of you who are at home, um, we uh, we thank you for being here, and we thank Jack for being back on the. Uh, on the, on the computer today and Bill for, for being on the monitor. So, so thank you very much. We're glad you're all able to join us. Bula! Bula! Come on, Bula! Bula! There you go. That is the welcome in Fiji. And in the time I've been standing here, if you'd have walked into some place in Fiji, you would have heard it no less than 10 times. They are a Bula people. They make aloha look sad and off to the side. They are a Bula people. Um, and it means welcome, and it means hospitality, and it means we're glad you're here. It really is that welcome. And, um, and it really does, in a way, it epitomizes their culture. Um, you show up at a hotel or, or post-conference. Post, uh, I went over to, I kind of called it an island. that was kind of like Gilligan's Island meets Fantasy Island. And, um, and, and there were only two people to greet us, but they sang. And, uh, and at our, our hotel where the conference was, Cindy might hit on this, when we arrived, they would sing. So, bula and welcome, and we're glad you're here. And that certainly is also how we feel about you this morning. Um, you noticed, and I think somebody else already pointed out that sharing our partnerships is an interesting title for today, but it is truly sharing our partnerships. We are one little microcosm of congregationalism out here in Soquel. And, um, and there are those microcosms across the United States and around the world. And so today, we're gonna get a chance just to, to um, I think Bob calls it a mountaintop view. I've always called it an airplane blue uh, view, like you're flying over. But um, um, we're gonna start with our, our annual meeting. And if you look at our bulletin cover, the annual meeting was the daring endeavor of sharing church. And they kind of point out around the edge the risky proposition, the dangerous journey, the precarious adventure, and my favorite, the bold responsibility. And it was designed, it, they didn't have a scripture theme because they wanted the speakers to be able to speak to this freely. And it was, the idea was the church in today's culture and the churches that were built, a lot of them post-World War II, not to mention back in the, in the 1800s, um, it was a different culture, a different environment. Where are we today and how do we minister today? And um, what are today's challenges? And most importantly, what are today's opportunities to share God's love with others? And for us, that's here. It is not necessarily our job to share it with the folks in Michigan. We have a lot of people in Michigan to share that love, but we can share that love here and in our own community and the folks that we touch throughout our missions and other things we do. And the, the, um, the AMC also, I'm gonna mention just for a moment, it's called the Annual Meeting and Conference. And for many, it's a pilgrimage. 
For some, like Bob, our delegate, it was, it was a first time pilgrimage into something. For others, it's an opportunity to go and meet new friends. I personally like it for that. I, I, I do business there, so there's that. But also, from the time, I don't know, I, from the time I was 20, I don't know, maybe younger, um, I loved looking at the next theme, the next location, and anticipating what might happen, what we might learn, because it's always speaking to um, what the NA can do for us and, and how they can serve us and how, how we can learn from really th the best folks, you might call it in the industry these days. And so to see old friends, to make new ones, to learn what other churches are doing and to share what we're doing and to hear speakers with messages that can help us make a difference. Bob will give us a firsthand account as our, our delegate. Um, in just a moment, we'll turn that over to him. We also had, we talked about Bula, and uh, the ICF stands for International Congregational Fellowship. They meet every four years. I'm just gonna tell you right now, don't try to do the math. <laughs> because it was, it was on target for a while, and then 2020, like everything else, messed everything else up. And so, um, a long time stalker of ICF, personally, I got involved when they met in Africa. I, I was determined for a long time to go meet our friends at Happy Life, and that was my opportunity to do that, to go to Happy Life with a group of folks as we journeyed from, um, from Happy Life down to the ICF conference in South Africa. And the thing that strikes me, and you'll hear a little bit from, from uh, Cindy later, and Zach's got a slideshow for us over in the hall. There's also some um, good eats and, um, and, and a little display of, of souvenirs, you might say. Um, but International Congregational Fellowship, every one of those words is important. It is so cool to find out that there are congregational churches around the world and to find out what they're doing. And in so many ways, they're like us. And in so many ways, they're different because they're ministering to their people. And the number, in my opinion, the number one word is fellowship. It is awesome, in the truest sense of the word, to get to fellowship with folks from around the world. This year, there weren't a lot of people from other countries for a variety of reasons, but we did meet our brothers and sisters in Fiji and also from Samoa, and, and that in itself was just an incredible, an incredible gift. Um, this year, the, the theme in Fiji was transformation. I have a little cheat sheet over in the hall you can take a look at if you want to take a look at that. But I think it speaks to all of us when we take the opportunity to journey away, to journey into something new, whether it's in Milwaukee, whether it's in Fiji. Sometimes it might just be a meeting down the street. I know for me, Ann, Ann Perkins asked me once to go to a little meeting over at St. Andrews and and now there's the shower program. It was just a little journey into a different place. And I think that, that uh, um, we all take those journeys, whether they're big or small, whether they're down the street or around the world. And today's scripture, it speaks to all of this. It speaks to, um, we're all, we are all given different gifts. We're all different people. We all have different things to do, different places to be. And just to repeat it all in one place, for the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, as in one body, we have many members. Many members here, many members we met in Milwaukee, many members we met in Fiji. Many members, and not all members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually, we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace God has given us. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Bob, who by the way, has served on personnel and administration for the National Association, I think, for some 10 years now, and was elected to the board of directors this last year and duly installed before we left Milwaukee. So, Bob. Thank you, Laura. <clears throat> Yes, the church council appointed me as the church's delegate to the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches annual meeting and conference this year. As was mentioned, this was my first meeting, and this is my report. 
Overall, I will be focusing on church institutional change as a subject that most interested me. My first impressions were the conference brought together about 200 in-person attendees, plus maybe 50 who attended online, including members from our church. And there seemed to be about an even split between clergy and lay members who attended the conference. As expected, the group was friendly and outgoing. Most attendees, as Laura indicated, had previously attended and had circles of friends there. We first time members, though, had uh, yellow badges that sort of made us stand out. There were a few of us, so we kind of stood out from the group of longtime attendees. About a third of the time was devoted to business sessions. The remainder of the conference was highlighted by inspiring guest speakers, breakout sessions, worship, and fellowship activities. I found nothing particularly notable in the conduct of the business sessions, except as Laura mentioned, somehow I got elected to the board of directors for four years. <laughs> uh, but you know, I joined Laura because she also serves in leadership of the National Association. She's the president of the board of governors. And it was remarked several times to me that our small SoCal church membership has held a disproportionate share of National Association leadership positions over the years. Laura served as moderator. Patty Haheim, who was before she joined our church, was also a moderator of the National Association. And we've participated in probably almost all of the association's boards and councils over the years. And it was mentioned, I, I became an active member of the board of directors personnel and administration committee and served for many years in that area. As you know, the theme of this year's conference is the daring endeavor of being church. And this really reflects our uncertain times. We've had health challenges. Churches are now struggling to reopen after being closed down during the pandemic. Our society is extremely unsettled and uh, this affects obviously church attendance and has promoted a lot of church closings. In past years, over a thousand people attended these conference meetings, but now only a couple hundred attend. But there's no despair, but a real sense of urgency to transform our churches to meet these challenges. This is the daring endeavor. The conference provides fellowship and support to inspire re revitalization of our local congregations. And this is what I learned. I returned inspired by what I experienced. <clears throat> I had, as Laura mentioned, I had a feeling of a mountaintop experience, a, a mountaintop view of the forces affecting churches throughout our country and how we are joined together in spirit to cope with today's world. This panoramic view helps to articulate what we already experience in our local congregations, but sometimes we just can't put it in words. I'd like to kind of conclude my report by very briefly addressing some of the broader insights of church institutional change that I received during this four-day conference. This is my daring endeavor, since these short remarks can only serve as an introduction for the sake of opening the subject up for our collective thoughts and discussion. As we all know, we are, all what's, we are in what some people call a post-modernity era which is characterized by instability, tribalism, and vitriol. We are all aware how this striking social upheaval affects our lives. Viewed from a long, longer perspective, these are periodic societal gyrations. We have to accept that change just happens. It's inevitable. How we respond is the issue. How do we want to respond? Here's a quote. 
the challenge of our times is not secularization, it is sustainability, meaning that we as churches need to focus on our own mission and commitment rather than allowing ourselves to feel that we are being overcome by outside forces. Here's another quote. If church membership is in decline, it is not because of our failure to adapt, but our failure to reproduce. In other, in other words, we need to re revitalize our outreach and grow. It was pointed out that most churches are mid 20th century shaped, designed to meet the needs of the older generations. While we still must do all we can to preserve those churches and to keep them in good health, but we also must invest in younger generations, the nuns and duns of our communities. It was said that the trick is not to change anything, but to change everything. That is, maintaining appearances for the older generation, but changing everything to reach the younger generations. This means we have to reshape the church's approach for different groups. Our teenage gaming day is a good example of appealing to the needs of that cohort, while we mean traditional church services for the older generation. The point is people don't need to come to us. We need to go to them. We need to facilitate dialogue. You may have heard this before. Today, America is a mission field. 71% of millennials are unchurched. Generation Z is even higher. Most people don't care about membership in anything. Our job is to open our doors and to welcome people to meet Jesus. It was suggested we look at our role as a bridge, providing safe spaces hosted by the believing community designed to make faith exploration accessible to newcomers. I'll read this again. It was suggested that we look at our, at our role as bridges, providing safe spaces hosted by the believing community designed to make faith exploration accessible to newcomers. I found this to be a profound thought. It leaves a lot of openness for allowing spiritual growth to occur outside of what many traditional church boundaries there are. The bridge is not necessarily the Sunday morning church service. It is a call to engage with people wherever they are. It is a balance of community outreach activities that are not necessarily religious in nature that forge relationships in the community to create goodwill. We are certainly engaged in, that, in this in our own church, for example, by hosting Taste of Soquel and showers and housing and meals for the homeless. But this doesn't need to be overly programmed. We are reminded that little engagements are big wins too. I know our congregation is already facing these issues, but it helps to see things from a mountaintop to have a more conscious understanding of the directions in which we are headed. And it's conform, com comforting to know that we are joined by other congregations all across the country in addressing the daring endeavor of being church. Thank you for appointing me as this year's delegate to the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches annual meeting and conference. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Cindy Rushan, who was a delegate to the International Congregation of Fellowship Conference in Fiji, who will have a few more remarks to say about her experience there. I'm not sure I was a delegate. I just kind of clung on to Laura's um, shirt and flew 10 hours to Fiji. Um, uh, but, it was, but it was a very enjoyable event. Um, I'm another one of these people who, this was my first year attending the NACC National Conference. Um, I, you know, every year I kept thinking about going, but either family or work or whatever kept me from going. And, um, but this year there was a need for a Zoom czar. Does everybody remember Zoom? Um, so I agreed to volunteer. Um, so I attended this year's National Conference virtually. And 
I got to meet lots of great folks via Zoom and hear about the work that the NACC is doing. Um, it was very informative, uplifting, and I encourage you, if you haven't attended the meeting or just trying to make it work for you, go to a couple of the sessions online. It, it was definitely worth your time. Um, but since I had gone to the national convention, at least online, I decided why not go to the international conference and hop on a plane here with Laura and Ellen and head over to Fiji. Um, so a lot of the folks I met virtually online were actually at this conference. Um, yeah, and it, so it was wonderful to see them go from being a little block <laughs> to a real live 3D person. Um, I, I, I actually got to meet the president of the NAACC, Ashley, um, who's amazing, and um, hear other NACCC members speak at the international conference. Um, we heard from the Pan American Institute, um, a, a mission near and dear to most of our hearts, and I also heard an interesting talk from an organization called Feed My Starving Children, um, which is designed to feed underfed children by distributing non-perishable food. Um, and really enjoyed got, getting to meet a lot of the people who are running these organizations um, and how passionate they are about what they're doing. One of the more interesting people at this conference was the main speaker, who was a man from Samoa. Um, I'm going to try and say his name. Brian Kali, 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 Kalia, um, who's from Samoa, and but actually kind of grew up outside of Samoa, along, uh, as well as his wife, and was returning to live back in his home village. And what was very enjoyable listening to talk was him, as a Christian, um, trying to basically, he's, how, how, how the Bible has influenced him, how it's transformed him, and how he's trying to bring those ideas and his, his native Samoan heritage and move forward. Um, his talk is actually online on YouTube, and if you look him up, it it's actually was a very interesting talk. Uh, but we weren't all going to meetings and um, breakout group. We actually had a really, really lot of fun. We visited cultural centers, went to the beach, saw beautiful orchid gardens, and, and then there was the mud baths. Um, yeah, yeah, and some of you, yeah, some of you are smiling. We love the mud baths, um, which is a lovely part of this island um, on Nadini, Nadine, um, where a natural hot spring was there, and they had dug out a big pit. And what you did was they pulled out all this mud, and you could put the mud all over you, and then you all walk into this little mud pit, and just kind of it's warm, and you soak. And I think, um, and then after you're totally covered in mud, you go into this other pool that's also natural and rinse off, and then go into a third one and everybody's having a great great time like everybody including people over 80 were putting mud all over themselves and there were mud fights and and metaphors were flying left right and then some no joke um, and so you know about being cleansed and moving on and I'm and everybody's having a great time and except for me I'm taking one look at that mud, and by the way, I don't have a problem with mud. I, um, my little overactive imagination was taking one look at that pit and going, how many tourists have been in there today? <laughs> and, and man, this temperature, perfect conditions for a Petri dish. Anyway, so I, I, I dabbed some mud on me, and I got rinsed off, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I did my duty. And it, it was definitely a lot of fun, and I think there's some good pictures of these mud baths um, in Parish Hall and of our other... Um, adventures we had in Fiji. Um, again, it was a really good trip. It was great meeting lots and lots of new people and seeing what people are doing out in the world. Um, and I am going to let Patty conclude us. Thank you. And they didn't leave me much to say, did they? <coughs> Which is fine. But um, it the National Association has been near and dear to my heart. It's been part of what helps our church to grow um, because we have sisters and brothers to share with. And also the International Congregational Fellowship has also been a very special place in my life. Um, from the mountaintop experience or even from the airplane, I would like you to think about the satellite view because then you can see the world. And the ICF is all about seeing the world and bringing it into view. We did have a wonderful time in Fiji, as Cindy said, and we did talk about needs for change and how daring the church endeavors are, even in our own spaces in the world, everywhere in the world where there's churches. Our theme, as Cindy and, and others have mentioned, was the good news that transforms, and transformation means change. Change of attitudes, change of understanding, 
change of willingness to see other people and see beyond ourselves and to see into the world that we don't know. And ICF gives you an opportunity to do that, to go places you never thought you'd get to go, like to Fiji. We read our scripture, and I want to read just one of the verses from the message. So Romans 12, 2 in the message says, Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God, and you'll be changed from inside out. This is the work that we all need to do in our change, because a change has to happen inside before we can see a bigger picture. And as we get a bigger and bigger picture, we find out that we are all one body in Christ. This body has many members, and some of the members are part of our church and our small part, but it's a bigger body. I've been involved with ICF since 2001, when I went to Korea with my son, who is here. And he's one with a shirt that looks like he's from Fiji, and he's going to give our, do some of the slideshows. So I thank Zach. Um, we've been to Greece and Albania. We've been to Honduras, to South Africa, to Brazil, Argentina, England, US, and now Fiji. Almost every corner. And we've heard from each other and people in those places. And when you see and hear them and know them, the, the expand expansion is wonderful. Paul is telling us to do that. Don't get so tied up in what culture is telling you or what people are telling you about what's happening in the world. Find out. Look out. See them. We did lots of good things in Fiji, and we made a small contribution to our host church and to the host families, giving small gifts and a little donation of money. But more than that, we developed new relationships. They know us, and we know them. Their children came out and sang and danced and were wonderful hosts to us. The women of the church fed us almost every single day. So they were in their kitchens and in their patios making and cutting up food and doing things just so that we could be fed while we were listening to speakers and doing our work. The love and joy that we experienced, we carried home with us. You see, I, I have my uh, sarong. Now, when we went places, and if you had shorts on, and like we went to the temple, you had to put one of these on even if you were a guy. So if any of you had shorts on today, you were walking to church, and somebody would give you one of these to walk around so that you would be covered respectfully and conservatively. So I thought I would do that today. But um, I think the most important part of all of this is to realize the larger body, that we're all working for peace. Everyone in that church and everyone in our, our group is sharing God's love. We're all praying for each other and the needs that are there. We're listening and finding out and seeing. And when you're seeing, one of the things I realized that um, things make a difference in a different way. We went to a little island, and you'll see pictures of that, just for fun, for swimming and snorkeling and, and being out in the sun and sort of having the island experience. But it's just a little atoll that we went to, and it may not be there in a year or two or three or four because of the seas that are warming and the waters that are rising because it's just a little place in the Pacific. And they talk to us about feeling the need in some of their small islands for a plan to go forward when some of these things happen. And it made me come back and be more aware and more concerned about our Earth. And I am concerned about our Earth. We have a new Earth team, and I hope that you will all join it. And when we have activities, you'll come forth because we are one and we are part of the greater good and the greater world that God has given us. We're going to invite you after this to come over to Parish Hall for um, our fellowship time and for a slideshow 
So you can experience a little of what we're talking about and what we saw in Fiji and some of the kids and some of the wonderful things that were there. We also have um, a, a ceremonial tradition that we'd like to share with you as well as some good tropical fruits that we had almost every single day. So I hope you will join us. I hope you will realize that it's good to be in partnership with others. It's good to be with our national association and to be with other churches and to realize we're all in it together. It's even better to see the world and to see that there are churches around the world that want the same things that we do and are praying for the same things, but are working in their own ways. They would come to Soquel, and maybe they all will someday, and look at our communities and say, what are you doing for your, the marine here, the, you know, the ocean here? What are you doing to meet the needs of our, your community? Fiji is not a rich country. Most people live in villages and they're pretty poor, but they are the happiest, welcomingest, loveliest people and so joyful that it was contagious. So wherever we are in the world, realize that you're not alone. We are in this together. Let us pray. O oh God, our creator, maker of heaven and earth, we pray today for Fiji and our brothers and sisters that are there, for those who were able to travel and to learn and to grow and to share God's love, for the ministries and churches of the NA, for the churches in Fiji, in Samoa, in New Zealand and Australia, for those in Argentina and South Africa, in Greece and Albania, England and Korea, for all those throughout our world who would share your love and grace. Make it so, O oh Lord. For this we pray. Amen. And now we'll stand for our closing hymn. In Christ there is no east or west, but realize the program continues over there in coffee hour. Go now, go now from this place in Soquel, not only to Milwaukee or Fiji and all the corners of the earth, but go home to neighbors, go to work, go to school, go have a cup of coffee, and wherever you are, may the love of God go with you, and may you be the church. Amen. <laughs>